Welcome one and all. Uh, thank you for joining us for uh, today's webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Kuldeep and I'm a business development manager with Data Labs India Solutions. And I'm proud to say that we are one of the leading digital transformation companies in the global market. Today, we are presenting strategy execution through balance scorecard framework, solution driven approach. And the webinar is presented by our eminent speaker, Mr. Sheikh Abdul Khader. And before we get started, if you have any questions during the presentation, uh, please uh, put them into the chat box or the question pane in the control panel of your Zoom. And we shall discuss them during the question and answer session towards the end of the webinar. And to give you a little insight into today's webinar, uh, as we all know, the core of strategy execution is to translate organizational goals into actions. So it is a process which is not only aligning the employee efforts, but also ensures that the right resources are being applied to the right initiatives at the right time. So by doing so, organizations can make sure that they are using their resources effectively and efficiently. And now, without any further ado, let us turn the time over to our expert presenter, Mr. Sheikh Abdul Khader. So Mr. Khader is the CEO of Data Labs India Solutions, and he leverages a rich experience of more than two decades in strategy transformations. He has helped organizations across the globe to achieve excellence in strategy execution, enterprise performance management, supply chain management, ERP implementations, and business analytics. So he would be taking us through the strategy transformation in a systems driven approach that is proven to be effective, effortless, and more importantly, sustainable. So let us welcome Mr. Sheikh Abdul Khader. So over to you, sir. Okay, thank you, Deep. Uh, uh, good afternoon, all. Thank you very much. Uh, Salaam Alaikum. Uh, thank you for joining the call. Okay, I appreciate. Uh, uh, Ramadan Mubarak, inshallah, so for all of you. Yeah. So let me start, uh, share my screen. Uh, I hope I have an access. If you are able to see it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is visible. Okay. So I think uh, Deep has given me some introduction about myself. So I don't have to repeat. Uh, basically, what we are going to do today is uh, uh, we all know that uh, strategy execution is one of the key challenges for the organization. Okay, so, so it's there is a lot of things, uh, bits and pieces connected together that has to be done in a, in a systematic way to achieve the st the strategy execution properly. So I think over a period of time, all senior leaders are struggling uh, and uh, uh, struggling to cope up with the strategy execution with all the technology and with all the management bandwidth to have. So still, it's a it's a, it's a very important topic to be handled properly. So what we did is, so we want to make this as a more like a uh, more, more or less like an automated kind of process instead of only a theoretical thing. So it should be more practical how to execute it. So that's that's a, that's a whole idea. So today what we will be talking is we'll talk about the brief methodology, how what is about the strategy execution and how the bits and pieces are connected together. And let us uh, take our approach. Uh, the solutions driven approach. So how the solution will drive you uh, the strategy execution. And then we talk about overall methodology uh, of any project. Uh, I think I'm, 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 I'm sure you are all aware how to execute it, but still a recap how to do the things together. Okay. So that's, that's the whole idea. So just a quick connection uh, on the balance scorecard, why balance scorecard is all about. So uh, to make sure that we are on the, on the same page. So basically what is strategy? So strategy where we are now, assess it. So where we want to reach and then how we want to go there. So as simple as that. But that's that's something, uh, not something it's always easy. Okay. So balance scorecard framework over a period of so many years, maybe so many decades. So it's a, it's a very popular methodology nowadays. Okay, along there are many other complementing methodologies in place. However, balance scorecard still it's one of the leading methodology to help all, all the management bandwidth. Okay, so uh, why balance scorecard? It's a, it's a fundamental question. You know, just I want to touch it before I go to the details. So having uh, 
And look, when you look at the, this sample, I, I keep talking about it always. When you talk about uh, balance sheet, okay, it does not talk about everything about the organization. So especially the intangible assets does not reflect in the, in the balance scorecard. So when the organization health, when we talk about, it all depends on how the current balance sheet is there and how, how the intangible assets. So intangible assets includes your customer relationships, your product innovation, okay, how, the, how your employees uh, are engaged. And there are multiple things which are very intangible and which are very important. So balance scorecard, it some, somehow it helps organizations to leverage and then uh, take the advantage of your intangible assets in executing the strategies. I think that's that's the whole idea. So, so okay. So the the basics of the execution premium is this is just a, we all aware of the the framework execution premium methodology. So it it talks about uh, different stages. First of all, you need to have a strategy in place. It's a develop the strategy, uh, translate the strategies. Align your other organization. So aligning means all your people, processes, the systems. Okay. Then your operations. Of course, operations are the heart of the any company. You need to uh, do it properly. Okay. So uh, so let me just something. Okay. Then you have uh, your execution process. Execution process is basically your operations and also your projects. Just to make it very easy. Okay. Then you need to have a review mechanism, so strategy reviews. That's where one of the big gap, we don't have usually the formal strategy reviews in place. We always, it is overshadowed by operational reviews, okay? Then you have a test and adopt. So it's a, it's a continuous ongoing process. It's never, uh, when, when somebody says our strategy execution is perfect and, and it will stay there for some time, it's, not, it's, it's wrong. So it's always a, a test and adopt phase whether it is related to the strategy or it's a strategy execution process, it's always evolving and then supported by the key strategy planning and operational planning methods. Now, this is very at the high level, okay? So when you are excel at that, so there is a criteria given by the Palladium earlier, so and still it is valid. So you have a strategy focused organization mechanism. You can always do an assessment how the strategy focused organization take place, okay? I talk about the key benefits, you all know about it. Okay, the, 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 the key things are, uh, so balance scorecard brings the culture, brings the structure to the, to, the, uh, to the organization, to the managers, to execute the strategies. And also it links all connecting dots, like aligning the strategies. And then you have your people connected, people alignment, the processes alignment, and also you will prioritize about the projects. Okay, it's not about only, uh, aligning your organization is also prioritization. What you want to achieve, when you want to achieve. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's a key success uh, factors for adopting is. So there are many, but I see that in my experience, what what we always see that actions. So whenever you have any strategy reviews, the actions taken has to be followed up. So that's one of the key things which we need to do. The balance scorecard needs to be updated. So you cannot keep create a balance scorecard once and then uh, assume that this will be there for some time. No, you need to keep on updating it periodically and make sure that it is reviewed. And then the data flow. So it's always painful to use a manual process for the balance scorecard reporting because it's a, it's a lot of data. First of all, there is a data inconsistency is there. So all these things you want to avoid to make it automated data flows to the balance scorecard so that you know nobody is debating about the data numbers itself okay and so there are so many uh, supporting documents in the in the in the strategy okay all these will be scattered and it will be with, with some key people so the system making the systematic approach <clears throat> will help you to put all them all bits and pieces together in one repository okay finally but not the least this will help you to connect the senior leaderships, break the silos, and then come as one, one unit, okay, as a team to, uh, to deliver the strategies, okay? So I think this is one slide I would, I would, I would like to do a quick briefing about it. So which will tell about the whole story. The strategy execution cycle, so you have all six stages. So that is very circular, okay? So I want to make it very linear. 
make it a little easier. So here, if you are able to see, okay, so let me highlight it so that, so what we talk about is if you put it in a simple terms, so we need to have a strategy plan in place, okay? So if you want to have a strategy plan in place, so you need to do some kind of strategic analysis. So we all do that, but how effectively we do that differs, okay? So we all do that. So it could be a SWOT, simple SWOT analysis, or it could be tree analysis, whatever. Okay, tree diagram or whatever. So you can you can have a, the Hoshin Conray or whatever. You do the uh, strategy analysis in a comfortable place where uh, you keep using it. Okay. So value gap analysis. What we call, talk about is with the current capabilities, how much you want you want to achieve and what is the gap and how you want to close the gap. So this is a part of your strategy plan. Okay. So the in, there will be some indicators in the strategy. So that we talk about as you go on. Okay. Once we have the strategy plan in place, the next thing is you need to translate it. Now the translation is very important. The first of all, we talk about the balance scorecard. So balance scorecard is a very structured mechanism where you can translate into strategic objectives, measures, and then initiatives, and then you have owner, and then you can also have some kind of budget for that. Okay. OKR is very in a recent past. OKR also is a, is a it's not very new. So it's a management by objectives. The same thing is an extension of it. So you have a very high level objectives defined, and then you focus on on a given period. You focus on two or three objectives instead of uh, diluting your uh, energy. Okay. So you can use along with balance scorecard if it is better. I advise if you are using a standalone, that's also you can always do that. So people performance. So people performance is always bottom up. Okay, when you talk about strategy, it's a top down. So people performance is bottom up. There is always, almost always, is a problem in linking people performance to the strategy. Almost always, the moment you can say confidently that our people performance is linked to the strategy, that means here really you are going in the right direction. Okay, that's that's a, that's a test point. What I can say. So people alignment comes at the last in the overall strategy execution, but that is the most important part. Okay, now you have, if you have multiple projects, you have a, too many projects in place, whether it is a CapEx projects or it could be your strategic projects or whatever. So you need to have a PMO structure. So the PMO structure almost always work as a standalone. They manage their uh, projects separately. Okay, but the, the, the strategy brings the priority to it. And also the delivery of the projects will add value to strategy, okay? So budgeting almost always, uh, in my opinion, as a keep in a, done as a separate standalone activity by especially the finance led by the finance. Okay, of course, exception will be there. Some organizations led by the strategy team. So budgeting is actually it's a communication of your strategy, the business plan. Okay, the, for a particular year. So the operational expenditures and capital expenditures need to be aligned. Okay, so this is a theme two. The theme three is. You need to report it. Okay. So whatever you are doing it, you need there, there should be a robust mechanism to report it. So each objective owner, the measure owner, or initiative owner, or the people performance, or the budgeting coordinators, or whatever. So they need to keep reporting on a month on month basis or whatever period. Some people do it on a weekly basis, some people in a quarterly basis. Whatever you do it, you need to have a mechanism to report it properly. Okay. So this is that comes in the performance and reporting. Okay, here, if you have a uh, multiple systems in place, you need to find a best way how to how to be the how to do the integrations too. Because if you don't almost always, you know, the data uh, is a problem. So you if the if the measured data is already available in any system, so always it's better to take it and automate it. So that's how it is. Then the review. The review part is very tricky. So always uh, is very important. The strategy managers is almost always, you know. They will be in a panic situations whenever you do the strategy reviews because no matter how do the uh, how effectively you prepare, there always there is some some questions asked and which you are unable to answer by the strategy team. Okay, so reviews we need to do it structured. Okay, so you need to have an agenda to do it. So do it in a proper way by theme by theme or objective by objective or by initiatives. So do it properly and the most important what I see is actions. And actions and communication. If you are able to do actions directly in the meeting itself and then communicate to them, and then 
somebody is responsible, the system is driven to them for uh, reporting and follow-ups, that's something great. Okay, So that is very important in the review and actions part. The finally, the transformation. Now, all these things we are doing it, but we need to know what is happening uh, in, uh, in, the, in the organization. Is, are we really transforming or not? So how do we do that? They, they, you must have some numbers for this. So there are different ways to do it. So few methods what we have done is, you can have a strategy focused organization survey quarter by quarter, especially if you're doing a new implementation, you can do that. The questions can be modified based on your need. If you think you have a better way to do it, and also, you need to have a balanced scorecard performance, the consolidation. So each weightages of each measures objectives can be consolidated. Then you need to have one number, uh, which will represent your whole business. Okay. Similarly, so all the projects, there should be some kind of weightage. The Based on the performance, you need to know the overall uh, initiative score, overall score. So likewise, your portfolio performance and the program performance also can be seen. <clears throat> we also need to know exactly the what is the overall people performance uh, index so that how, how is uh, is the direction of people engagement is taking up properly or not i think this is a quite a quite uh, linear way to give for me to give uh, the idea about plan translate perform and uh, performance reporting and then reviews translate i think this is uh, the, the solution with what we have built I know it's not really a marketing campaign, but the solution what we have built is something like this. Okay, it's an execution premium framework as a foundation. Then you have all best best practices built on top of it. Then you are you are you are connecting it, uh, connecting the dots through strategy reviews and communications and actions. This is the collaboration part. What is most important, and also you have a sustainable strategy execution. We are, we are going to add a new module uh, ESG. Okay, so this is a very upcoming and even the balance scorecard also, we can have a theme for ESG, uh, maybe below the learning and growth. So that is something which we can talk. I think this will evolve as we go on. Okay, so now if <clears throat> I would like to take you to a quick tour, maybe after 10 minutes or so, quick tour on the solution. Uh, how this part, whatever we have discussed, how this is done. So this is very important part. Okay, so I'll just keep this slide open and then I'll go take you to uh, the, the system. Okay, so if you are able to see the sc screen, just please confirm. Yes, yes, it is visible. Okay. Okay. Okay, so whatever we discuss now, all things are possible to do through one system. That's what is very important. Okay, so you can see the modules here available. Okay, so for that, I would like to talk about little about masters because always you know as a, as a strategy professionals we need to know what are the masters and how these data are set up second thing is how we do that uh, reviews and all so first thing what we have see is planning part i'll talk about it little later because you know this is a little tricky i don't want to bog down uh, discussion into this so we talk about strategy translation so let me talk about balance scorecard okay so here we can talk about strategic objectives. Okay, so we can talk about strategic objectives. Uh, so we need to create all the strategic objectives in in place. So this is this is a this is something which the management have to do. Sit quiet, identify what are the strategic objectives. Of course, my perspective. Okay, and then for each strategic objective, there must be an owner, and then uh, the reporting frequency. If you if you think if you want to manage the objectives by 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 giving a specific period, so you can have a start and end also. Okay, so uh, you can I think that's a strategic one. Objectives is one of the key master we need to have. It. Okay, and then one of the most important is uh, the the uh, so the the measure. So I think this is the trick. So defining the measure is all all what we have to do. Okay. Defining the measure is very important. We call this as a measure dictionary. Measure, there should not be any ambiguity in defining uh, the measure. We need to agree all people. Okay, So this has to be there and it should be defined in a proper way so that the proper type of mechanism measure is defined with all its thresholds. Okay, So we can have thresholds 
And then you, even if you have any formula, for example, when you talk about revenue, it's a quantity and price is a formula. So you can define the price formula. So in case if you want to measure only quantities, the data integration, price you want to give it manually, whatever. So all these options can be done through system in a, in a definition uh, manner. Okay, so of course you can also define business processes. I'm not going to touch that just to give you. So we have the projects, which is one of the most important thing. So define initiatives, okay, the strategic initiatives, you can call it as a project, whatever you call it. Okay, defining uh, projects is very, very uh, important. Okay, so define master data of the projects. Okay, like you have, this is basically a project charter. All the information is coming from the project charter. So you have a plan started, plan end date, what is the budget? So who is the project owner? Who is the project uh, collaborator? Okay, or whatever, or what are the project risks you have? And this is a dynamically that you can have project risks updated. Then you can have activities or milestones. Of course, this is very important. Activities and milestones can be defined through system. Okay, so you can have, and then you can you can come up with a Gantt chart or whatever that I will talk about later. Okay, and there are multiple masters. I'll stay. I'm, I'm just stopping here just to give you an idea about the masters. Okay, so this is uh, just a quick uh, example in the, in the pupil performance. You can define the people performance, like individual performance, some masters are there, but I will not go there now, okay. So when we do that, okay, so this is the translation part of the strategy. Now we want to do the performance reporting. How do we do that? That's very important. So we call it as a strategy reviews. This is a master measure data, okay. So almost always uh, you have, uh, for example, I'll just give an one example where we talk about, Okay, so for example, you have measured data. So when you are reporting measure in a month-on-month -month basis, the measure owner basically, you know, they need to add the, the target versus actuals. Of course, you can predefine targets. Then they need to write the analysis. Why this is performing good or bad or whatever. And then what are the actions? This is actions is more important. So in this, in this way, you can, of course, the solution can help you to look at what happened last year, last week, four year. And then if there is any supporting documents also can be attached. Okay, so this is the major data what we are talking about. And then objective story. Objective story is what is uh, objective story is something which is very critical where we talk about uh, the, how these organizational goals or objectives, whatever you call it, is going forward. Okay, is it taking a nice direction or not? So what is your overall objective? When you go to the objective story, so you can see the overall uh, measures. We can see the all connected measures, connected initiatives. Okay, so connected risks in place, relative gap, blah blah blah. Okay, so you can have your strategic analysis, uh, objective story. So you can write the objective analysis here. So why this object is performing nicely or uh, recommended actions? You can do that. Okay. So similarly, the initiative stories. Okay, so initiative story is nothing but your your project report. Okay, your project report. So in the project status, so if you take any particular project, so the project manager has to periodically update, and also the system has to support him with the task manager. So how to do that? So that can be done through to the, a project initiative. Okay, the initiative story. So where it has also all the KPA, all the then you can you can also have some kind of a Gantt chart to showcase how the project is moving forward. So month on month basis, you can you can find out how to do that. Okay. Okay. So this is this is how. Now all these things. The reason why I'm talking about is there is something called strategy communication. Now whenever you want to do something, the strategy communication plays a key role. Okay. So now I will talk about this. We'll take, let us take one step back and talk about how do you do the review? So let us, that will give you an idea. How do we do the reviews? So let me take you to a dashboard, performance dashboard. I will give you, uh, I'll just tell you about someone, one uh, scorecard. Okay. Yeah. 
So this is something like a, a classical balance scorecard where you have a perspectives. It could be any perspective. Perspectives. You have objectives, measures, targets, actuals. And you, if you have multiple levels, so you can always drill down and look at it. Okay. So this is one classical the balance scorecard. What you talk about the the perspectives and all. Now I'll just take you to the strategy map, which is one of the most important point I would like to discuss. Strategy map, we all know that strategy map is gives us the cause and effect of the whole story. Okay, how these objectives are linked, interlinked. And uh, if we have a drill down capability on uh, on the on the strategy map, uh, from where you can navigate to across the organization, that is really great. So now we'll we'll see something similar to that. Now this is a strategy map. What we you can see, you see all these strategic objectives and of course the themes. If you click on your own objective, so you can see the story here. So you can see the objective performance, measure performance initiative performance and also risks here. At the same time, you can connect to the people, the bottom up. Okay, people performance and also team performance. In case if you want to use a cross-functional team, sometimes you know in some organizations like my home, so they use teams extensively. So these teams also need to be aligned, okay, to, to, to a large extent. So that's how it is. So now in this case, if you know that it's showing green, but you don't know why. If you want to click, double click on it, you should be able to, uh, you will be able to open the story. So that's what I just told you about the story. So this story will open, you can look at it. So you don't have to remember anything. Now in this, if you want to have any action item, that's very important, you just click an action item here in the screen. So action item will be created just like this, okay? So it could be a meeting action or it could be a general action. So you can classify them for the follow-ups. Okay, so you can say some kind of uh, number for a, for a reference. Then you can select uh, when you want to complete this task. Okay, what is the time you want to complete, for example? Okay. For example, yeah. So on the, how you want to set up the reminders on an hourly basis, whatever, you can do that. And then you can select any any uh, any any email, whatever. Okay, so this is if you save it automatically, the record will be saved. You can see action items created. Okay, action items created. Okay, so you can see action items created here, <clears throat> and then this action items will go automatically to the to the user who is responsible. Okay, and then they can they need to complete it when they want to complete it. They don't need to be the user in the system. They can directly open it. I just I have I kept it open. Uh, I have one one. I think uh, if I open my email box, my the email will come. Just click it. The screen will open. You don't need to log in. Just uh, update the status and then just close it. The message will come back to the owner who created the action item. I think that's that's as simple as that. Okay. So likewise. So there are multiple features available in the in the strategy communication as part of the strategy execution. Okay. Now let me take one step back. If I hope it is clear that at this point of time, I would like to just quickly talk about a little about the people performance. Okay. So in the people performance, the most important is the three things. One is the individual performance. Second is the team performance. The third is the three sixty degree review. Okay. Individual performance means individual goals. So you need to have a personal objectives, okay? So then personal measures, you need to link personal objectives to the measures, employees, and then you, you keep on measure, reporting the um, uh, performance of the <coughs> individual employees on a month-on-month -month basis. So whether it is an automatic update from connected to your SAP HR or success factors or whatever, you get the data update it automatically. In case if you don't have, you can do it directly here, okay? So likewise, you can create a team performance. You can also do 360 degree review. 360 degree is very important because you can get the feedback from your peers, your subordinates, your superiors, and then have the overall weightages as a predefined. So you can you can generate the overall score. Finally, the overall people performance can be, we can always 
uh, get uh, 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 generate a people performance based on that. For example, okay, so you can always get uh, some kind of people performance uh, uh, numbers automatically generated. I think that's a, that's a people performance part. I would like to talk about little about budgeting because the budgeting is always is a disconnected from the strategy. So I would like to talk about little about budgeting. So now what is what happens in the budget is so what happens in the budget what happens in the budget is uh, let us say in the budgeting we we key there is some masters okay basically how do we the budget is of course the general ledger the cost center or profit center wise budget calculations are very important so you can do the capital budgeting and the operational budgeting so now this is a masters so you define cost center profit centers and fund centers in case there is a fund center so you can always define your your masters okay and then uh, all this setup is there i'll not go details into that for example when you are operational expenditure so what happens usually is in the organization see they, they circulate excel files they collect the data they upload it then the budget coordinator will do all compilation job it's a very laborious job i have done Myself, maybe budgeting part when I was in maybe in 2007, 2008. So that is a very laborious process. Uh, I never got appreciated for, for budgeting process, uh, leave, uh, especially when you, when you are talking about operational expenses, because the CEO was almost always is worried about the increasing increased operational expenses. So always. Yeah, now, now I think it is back. Now it is back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now <clears throat> the budgeting part, so you can have the very advanced budgeting model, by the way. So you can have your driver-based model or your uh, support schedule. Support schedule is nothing but the breakup. For this particular cost center, for this particular GLs, so if you want to break up, you can see in the bottom. Okay, so you can see the total calculations here. So this is a user-defined calculations. So you don't have to write any Excel or something. So in this itself, you can have the calculation written just like Excel, and it's it, it can be applied to all the sheets. Okay. So so this is uh, the budgeting. So you can compile all these heads into a profit and loss statement or your balance sheet accounts or your cash flows. Okay, very easily. And similarly, there is a cash flow. I'm just trying to navigate. So the capital expenditure budget. Okay, so if you have data, so all capex items can be defined here properly. Then your budget for this capex also can be budget schedule given. If you want to also add more uh, the capex analysis like NPV kind of thing, so you always can add this. Almost all the methods are available, so you can just maintain it. So this will give you the overall budgeting process. Okay, I'll just stop here about the budgeting process. Then I'll just let you to take about uh, OKR. I know, I know, OKR is very uh, methodology. It's very popular nowadays with uh, the Google and uh, Intel doing it, and many companies are following. This is classical, the same. Only thing, only difference between the balance quota objective and OKR objective. OKR objective is a little bigger, okay? And then you have a focused for for a period of time, like three to six months or nine months. You achieve that. So all the things what we talk about. In the balance scorecard is already the same, but it's it's a different mechanism. How we operate is different in the with the OKRs. So you have like initiative stories, okay? So initiative stories in OKR. Okay. So similarly, but it will it will be a little detailed in the OKRs. So you have you have a different approach to manage the initiatives in the OKR. Otherwise, the conceptually it's more or less closer to balance scorecard mechanism. Okay, so I, in the best practices, if you use two, both together, it will be more beneficial to you. Okay, now let me just touch 
about the enterprise risk. So you have a risk management. So when you talk about the, the, the translation, so you also always, uh, you have a risk management in place. So you need to connect the risk. So if you don't connect the risk, you know, always, always, you know, risk will be dealt in a separate way. So you need to define your risk management approach. So define all uh, strategic and uh, operational risks here. The project risks and in the, in the initiative itself. So all these risks with the risk indicators can be monitored through risk and risk actions. Okay. Similarly, a compliance management. Compliance management is a static, is a, a, a classical uh, target-based uh, management. So you have your compliances scheduled. Uh, always, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a routine job. It could be a calibration or it could be whatever. It could be a certification or it could be anything else. Okay, so so you need to have vaccinations kind of thing. You know, it's always uh, compliance is always better to have a, a integrated to strategy because nothing left uh, in the bottom. Uh, something that is a major thing uh, we did not follow and we have a, put everything into risk. Okay, so so this, this is a compliance management. Okay, so we talk about uh the operational reviews okay the where how we do the complaints uh, operational reviews where we talk about the action messages and then uh, reporting let us take let us take into the organizational performance now in the organizational performance it's basically a number okay so how do you do like for example so how do you do the uh, uh okay so how do you do the balance scorecard? For example, this 127 is a percentage. So what is a breakup? So each objective has uh, objective measures. Based on that, the system will be able to give you the complete picture of calculation. So you don't have to remember, or there is no mis mistake in the formula in Excel files. So everything will be connected together. Similarly, you can see the initiatives, the portfolio performance, overall portfolio performance also can be seen if you, if you select any particular so you can see what is the overall portfolio scores, what is the portfolio percentages. Now I'll just take you one step back. Okay, then we talk about uh, alignments. Okay, usually you know what happens when the, the organization grows. There is untouched areas. Always there will be misalignments. Each department major, whether we like it or not, there will be some kind of misalignments will be there when you compare the department to department and also as a group company, a business unit to business unit, something. So as a, as a head of strategy, okay, so it's very important role we need to play is what are the misalignments? So it's not a one-time job. So you need to identify them. So first identifying misalignments is it's a, a big a challenge. So when you do that, okay, at least, you know, you identify them and then bring a repository. That's enough for you, okay? So bring a repository. So these are the highlighted, then you debate it and then have a plan, okay? Have a plan, how these alignments can be improved over a period of time. I think that's, that is something which is a, uh, uh, you can have it like, especially when I, I'll give an example, you have an IT strategy in the organization. Always, you know, people in the business units are something, you know, against IT, because I was leading IT for a period of time. So always, you know, so this is a, why you should, uh, IT people create a problem for us. Okay, well, why we should we ask them? Okay, so this is where the misalignment comes. We don't need to use one system across the company. It's never what is good for company is that's what we need to use. Okay, so if we consciously put them into the list, so it will be at least easy to address, and then you can have a plan for that. I think that's a quick uh, navigation, and then there are plenty of dashboards where we talk about uh, uh, so SFO, the strategy focused organization where if you want to uh, do any assessment kind of thing, okay? So if you are, how the organization is moving? So let us say in one year, you have done three analysis, three, three times assessments. So these are the SFO readiness score uh, criteria. So you can see how it is going forward. And also you can, if you zoom out and see, you can see if you have a multiple years, you can see what happened last year and what is the current year. You can see it. Okay. So this is always a handy thing. You know, sometimes, you know, as a strategy head, it is not easy to communicate that the performance is poor or good. It's all subjective. Okay. So having some kind of mechanism will help you to 
address this point up front in the in, in the leadership team especially the operational heads okay so you can have some kind of uh, the now i'll just go back if you if you permit me i'll just go back to home page okay so and uh, okay i missed something here which is the planning part okay i did not talk deliberately because this is very important okay so let me take you to that okay so strategy analysis where we talk about we just take one step back because i don't want to rush here strategy analysis we talk about organization structure define it structure properly okay uh, you can have your you can you can have your objectives the mission vision values for each business unit or department or whatever then strategic analysis okay strategy analysis where we talk about all the methods so the problem here is when you do the strategy planning somebody will be sitting and doing all this okay but usually you know there is no connection to the strategy execution that's almost always okay so this will be hidden somewhere and you, there is no mechanism how we connect it so that's what we are trying to connect it okay so if we take up for example if you take up uh if you take up a, a swot analysis or something okay so if you do that so you you can take up uh, organization unit wise the product group wise customer group wise the market region wise so you can do the swot analysis it cannot be done as a if somebody is doing as a as a group as a company uh, do the swot analysis it will be definitely wrong so you need to do it by product group or a customer group or a market region something very granular so if you do that so if you do that it will be more or less accurate and it's not only about creating uh, it's not only about creating uh, let me take you maybe this is another one i'll just take it another one okay so let me take okay. let me take this one okay i'll show you so if you do swot analysis the most important thing is when how long this strength will be with you so is it going to be forever no nothing can no strength will be forever it will be for 3 months 6 months okay how your competitor is doing so all these things can be it can be integrated here okay so if you do that you can have a nice reports where you can see at least you know what's going on at least whatever in our mind if you put it here so it will be a very nice way to do it so these things will be converted into a strategy indicators it will be connected to the strategy execution part now i'll just go to your strategy classical so whenever we talk about a strategy plan what is the most important outcome of your strategy or strategy projection right strategy projection so you need to have a, at least 3 to 5 year strategies in place the numbers okay the projections you need to have it then how what is the value gap so when you, when you do your strategy analysis okay in the planning part so you come up with the uh strategic gaps and how you close them also at the high level at the assumption level you will you, you will define that okay now that is completely different with the strategy execution actually that is a continuation strategy execution is a continuation of that in reality there is a disconnect okay so to avoid that okay so there could be a value gap you you link here how to close that value gap here so you link this a balance scorecard and also con con connected strategic objective and mission and now this the linking of this will be helpful when you do the strategy reviews when you go for an objective story for example okay when you do that so there is something called here value gap closing so how this value gap is going to be connected so indirectly you know whether you like it or not it, it will be keep on report at least you know you don't miss the some critical engagements so likewise okay so likewise you can do that strategy analysis uh, and strategy projections and uh, i think this is this is how uh, if i uh, sum it up uh, okay now we talk about plan translate uh, reporting part reviews and then transform okay so we keep on adding something like this uh, together in an integrated way i think uh, this is a quick uh, overview about what we are going to do i think we <clears throat> we need to talk about more uh, just let me quick you another 2 minutes 2 or 3 minutes how typically how to do it 
because there is no standard way how to engage. It all depends on organizational readiness and then organizational state status. Okay, how to do that? How what is the mindset? It's about all about leadership. Okay. So there could be usually we do that. Uh, they ask me, well, tell me, give me the project plan, how you do it. So this is a typical project plan. First thing, as any consulting engagement, you know, we do the assessment. Where is the come up with the gaps in the, in the strategy execution? Then you have you align your uh, the balance scorecard and strategy maps and all. Okay, then PM initiatives. Almost always, you know, initiatives are separate, the strategies are separate. So we combine them together. Then you talk about the structures, processes, people's okay, alignment. Then the reporting part. So how do you do the who is reporting? What is the data entry here? So the who is doing the data entry? How what is automation with the ERP system? Okay, who is reporting it? Who is approving it? Okay. And then automate the processes. If there is any integrations, I think first do it. Okay, and then you take up aligning and risk and compliances. So this is how we do it. Okay. So I think uh, there is a lot of things we can talk about with a given time constraint. You know, I would like to have a uh, deep if you allow. So you can take up uh, questions and uh, let us have a uh, discussion uh, so that we can we can we can get the value out of it. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. So thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Khadar. So definitely, we shall take some uh, time for uh, questions now. So just a reminder, uh, you can also, you know, use the control panel uh, to raise the hand if you are unable to unmute. Uh, so I think you are uh, all of you are uh, able to uh, have the access to unmute yourselves and you can post your questions so we can discuss them. So any specific uh, point where we would like to like say you want to know more about or uh, any any critical question or an advice or whatever based on your experience i know you are all very experienced uh, professionals so you know uh, how to do this in your particular organizations so please feel free okay so yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Hari Kumar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I wish you happy. Everybody happy. Uh, best wishes on Ramadan. And uh, I am Hari Kumar from uh, Al Kifa Group. Um, thank you for uh, taking over us through the uh, session. My first question is: uh, What is the use? What is the need of having? two different methodologies, like you said, uh, the balance scorecard and OKRs. I think uh, the system should, uh, it is better, of course, that's an add-on to the system, I believe. Um, but is there a requirement for a user to use both the OKRs and the balance scorecard? Yeah, very, very good question, uh, Harry. I think it's better not to use both together. It's, it's, it's not advisable. You stick to a one methodology, OK? Uh, I, I personally suggest that balance scorecard methodology is more comprehensive and it touches every nook and corner. So use the balance scorecard. So OKR is something, you know, uh, people use it on ad hoc basis, okay? So they have a specific way to manage their operations, their, their business, okay, priorities. Unless or otherwise it is required, I think balance scorecard should be good enough for you to manage overall thing. Yeah. So... Uh, but uh, when you are doing a strategy execution, you know, it's always uh, people prefer to create a one cross-functional team to adopt a particular, uh, to achieve a particular goal, organizational goal, without touching the regular things, okay, in any particular business unit or in any corporate unit. In that case, you know, that OKR could be a nice full add-on for you. Yeah. Thank you, Kadasa. Yeah, thank you, Hari. Uh, so, yeah, any more questions are welcome.
So any typical challenge in your organization where you see what we talk about uh, is missing? Uh, any other thing which you feel, please feel free. And you always can write to us for knowing better. Okay, so we will be very happy to have uh, to answer your queries and discussions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any questions uh, uh, further? Yeah. Yeah, good, good afternoon. This is Jahangir again from Malatipa. I have one question with Dr. Uh, Abdul Qadir sir. The thing is that in the strategy analysis part, the right at the beginning planning, there can be so many th uh, models available, SWOT, PESEL, then order model, and then diagram. What do you suggest? Should one go for one to two or three maximum? Or the more it is, the more beneficial it is? What is your expert advice? Uh, this is very, very tricky question. You know, it's all depends on how your strategy managers manage it. Okay. And uh, what kind of consultant you are going to engage. Okay. So uh, I, there is no for one perfect answer for this. You know, so it's all it's always better to know about those methods. Okay. Uh, so stick to two or three maximum. So you don't need to do all. At the end, you know, I'll bring same thing to the table. Okay. So SWOT, I think it's a very simple. If you do it properly, that's that's a given thing. And then on top of it, maybe you can have one or two. I think. Okay. So pestel is also very important nowadays because of your ESG kind of environment, uh, social and uh, governance. So SWOT pestel is, I think, you should you must do it. Then any one or two of this. So usually what happens, you know, when you do strategy planning, so there is a there is a method how to do it. Okay, that depends on the industry, that depends on uh, the region, what you do, it, and then the level of uh, organizational maturity. So you can do that. So uh, what I, in, in, a, in a absence of any strategy planning, uh, formal planning activities, at least you do SWOT analysis, you know, they take the mindset of the people and deposit here. Okay. So this is, I think, my advice. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Then comes the second thing, if you allow me. You, we have seen your uh, this software where you were showing all the data was punched in and you were showing the results also. Uh, just a quick question that is it customizable according to the need of the organization or uh, uh, is there and how uh, uh, easy how comfortable it is to uh, customize it if it's not customizable yeah so uh, that's a good question uh, so the thing is uh, the, the solution is based on the microservices kind of technology so it's a, it's a, it's a easy uh, customizable okay? just to tell you about that however for a given uh, methodology, okay, so most of the, uh, the options are already available, okay. It's all about configuration. So mm -hmm. most of the requirements are already available because in the configurations you set up, all almost all of them are taken care. In case, especially in the reporting or uh, in some, it's always customizable. Yes, we will do that. It's, because uh, you know, uh, if somebody says that our solution fits everywhere, no, that's wrong. Okay, it's always there is a room for uh, uh, more uh, uh, configuration and customization for individual requirement. Yes, the solution is uh, customized. Ah, customized. Okay, thank you. Uh, a colleague of mine was sitting here. Uh, I think I don't see him anymore, but uh, uh, probably he would have asked one more thing uh, regarding. Uh, those who are working in Saudi Arabia in the financial sector and specifically in banking sector. Here they are regulated with the SAMA regulations. And when it comes to SAMA regulations, they don't allow data to be hosted outside Saudi or with some particular. So uh, how you are going to uh, facilitate this thing, uh, this regulation? Yeah, that is, that is uh, so there, there will be a dedicated hosting for them. In the and based in premise. at the local yeah. at the local premises, yes, local environment. You can paste it, and then you can do all security arrangements uh, aligned to your, your the organization. Yeah. Okay. So we have three things. One is your local setup. 
if you want to manage. Only thing is, you know, if you do in a, your local server, uh, so the P updates will be little, I mean, like it will be little like once in a month kind of thing, the updates, okay? So you can have a hosting, the data center within the region, or you can have a common hosting. So these, these things, you know, when we go, we will have a whole uh, discussion and then all the compliances will be followed up. Yeah. Okay. So it all depends on the client. Okay, so all options are available. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think there is one more question on the comment box if you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is from uh, Shaquille uh, Bhatti. So the question is, uh, I have a problem with the mic. So can you just elaborate what you said earlier on SWOT analysis? Uh, uh, it has to be done through an external party, like a market researcher. Uh, okay, SWOT analysis, uh, external party, they do it from the, from the independent uh, analyst point of view. But almost always it is required that SWOT analysis to be done by the internal manager. That has to be done because, you know, it's not only about real SWOT, it's about the perception. Is it they consider this as a strength for them or a weakness? They need to know. So what we used to do in early 2006, 2007, you know, when we are doing a, in, a, in a corporate life, you know, we all the departmental managers, heads, they have to do SWOT analysis for a given set, okay, irrespective of what, whether it is a correct or not. So this gives the understanding of them, uh, of the, the strengths, weaknesses. To the table and also there is something uh, they can talk openly about it which uh, nobody knows okay so if this is done in external parties it is a very important but it, the, the reality will miss at the end of the day the execution will be done the internal people right so the performing of the SWOT analysis by internal team is mandatory if you want to if you allow somebody to do it from outside also that's an added value yeah. that's my question i hope it's answered yeah, I think that answers uh, the question. So we have uh, uh, Mumin Ali. I think he has raised his uh, hand. I'm just trying to unmute. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, I'm Mumin also from Akifa. Uh, yes. Regarding uh, the part of oh, yeah. the alignment. So there was like a section in the software where there is alignment between SVU and SVU, SVU and function and so on. So can you just elaborate more on its functionality? Is it mainly yeah. for, for goals cascade or does it give other functionalities? Alignment, strategic alignment, right? Yes. Now, see, when you talk about balance scorecard, one of the key thing is strategic alignment, okay? It's very easy to tell, but it's very complicated to do it in reality. Now, when you talk about, in the when you talk about the things in organization, we have the business processes, we have people, we have systems and then we have structure in place. So all these things somehow need to be aligned. Now, if you are, if you are sitting internally, if you say, maybe sometimes you don't know that you are not, you are not aligned. Okay, you, you may not be even aware of that. So it's always better to do an alignment uh, workshop where we talk about the business processes aligned to your strategy. So, the, so it starts with strategy. Okay, so you have a strategy map, strategic objectives. All your business processes, are they aligned to it or not? So there is a matrix, you can do that. So uh, objective, okay, objective and uh, business process matrix, you can do that. Likewise, you can have uh, the initiatives, objectives matrix. And then also you have like overall, uh, I have one slide to, to, to talk about the alignments. So let me just uh, go to that slide. Maybe that will give you an idea. Yeah. So if you see, look at it. Okay. So there is in the in the organizations. If you talk about enterprise strategy, okay. So let me just pull this enterprise strategy. Then you have a linking to the business unit strategies. Okay. So then you have a, a, your customers and vendors, your corporate units. So you have so so many things in place. So now these things are they really aligned or not? That has to be done in a proper way. Okay. So as a strategy team, okay, so always uh, they should keep an eye on alignments. There is a there is a possibility that something go misaligned. Okay, so you need to have every quarter, every six months or one year. So look at the overall organization, what is aligned and what is not aligned. So I'll give an example. Okay, I I keep this 
So in a group company is using SAP S4 HANA. Okay. And then one business unit is not using SAP S4 HANA. It's a small business unit. Now they say that we don't need to use this SAP S4 HANA in this business unit. And then corporate IT says, no, you must use it. Okay. Whereas a, a, a industry vertical a ERP could fit into that. Okay. So this is how, to, how we'll make a decision here. Okay. So if we have a conscious decision, they might use the independent solution to get the more benefit for that particular business unit. Okay. Now this will be identified in the alignment part and agreed. So there is no debate about it. There is no confusion. Later tomorrow, somebody should not say why you have SAP, why you are not using it, something like that. Similarly, so there could be any other example also for the misalignments. Okay. So if you have a, like a people performance evaluations, so you can have a methodology across the organization. And if there is some particular business unit has a high risks, so they need to have a different approach. So they, they must be identified and then uh, jotted down into the, into the plan. So it's a, it's a, there is no hard, uh, best way to do the alignment, but it at least you know it should be visible and agreed by the leadership team. Over a period of time, when you keep on discussing, you know, it, it, it improves the alignment process. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, I think we have uh, room for one more question. If anyone has a question, please uh, go ahead. So I, I have, if you don't have a question, I have one question for you. How many times the strategy executives are involved in budgeting process? Okay, so if you don't have any question, please, you can answer this, okay? So are you doing it uh, budgeting process religiously, which is aligned to the strategy? So that's my question to you guys. Mm -hmm. So would anyone would like to answer that question? Well, Kadesa, for us, I'll say it's a tricky question. At the moment, the straight answer would be no, not as it should be done. Uh, in our organization, uh, we would go parallel and on the later stages, we try to align the budgeting with the strategy part. But I think you got the point that uh, it should be the other way around, that from the beginning, it should be like this, uh, but currently, if you talk about us, so we are not uh, budgeting and strategy. They go move independently, and on the later stages, they are integrated. Try they are, they they are like try to integrate. Yeah. It's not easy, by the way. It's not easy. Yes. Okay. So yes. it's, it's, it's a it's a learning experience for the organization. Yeah. Great, sir. Yeah, Deep, uh, if you would like to... Yeah, I think uh, there, there, I, I don't see any other questions coming in. So uh, I would like to just uh, call it a day. Uh, thank you, everyone. So we appreciate all of you being here. Uh, please note that uh, you can visit our website at labsindia.com uh, to know more about us. And we shall also be sending out a follow-up email about today's event in detail. Uh, thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you all. Okay, thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.